Cambridge University, a world-renowned university, offers an annual salary of tens of millions just to keep a young Chinese female scientist. However, under the persuasion of her mentor and friends, she still chose to return to her motherland. Even the Chinese government attaches great importance to her return, and the Chinese regard her research as a national treasure. The scientist is Mingxin Liu, and her research field is sustainable energy. As we all know, the Chinese government places a priority on investing in renewable energy primarily because it enables the country to tackle problems of air and water pollution and mitigate risks of socioeconomic instability. It is hardly a surprise, therefore, to see air pollution a ranked as top concern for people in the country. A 2015 Pew poll found that air pollution is considered the second largest problem for residents in China. At present, China is the world's leading country in electricity production from renewable energy sources, with over triple the generation of the second-ranking country, the United States. In a world marked by great uncertainty and volatility, the world is looking to China. So, what will her return do for this promising field in China? Why does the Chinese government attach so much importance to her return? Okay, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about. Let's get started. In early 2020, renewable energy comprised about 40% of China's total installed electric power capacity and 26% of total power generation. By 2021, it had grown to 29.4% of total power generation. The share of renewables in total power generation is expected to continue increasing to 36% by 2025, in line with China's pledge to achieve carbon neutrality before 2060 and peak emissions before 2030. China's emphasis on the return of this new energy genius also proves its ambitions for carbon neutrality. After returning to China, Liu was appointed as the deputy dean of the School of Materials and Energy, University of Electronic Science and Technology of China. In May 1990, Liu Mingjin was born into a scholarly family in Chongqing. Perhaps deeply influenced by the warm family atmosphere, she was very keen to absorb the nutrition from books since she was a child. When she was still young, although Liu was as lively and playful as other children, she was very fond of thinking and exploring new and unknown things. Perhaps it was this strong innate desire to explore, which laid the foundation for later research on new energy. Lu grew up in Chongqing. The weather there is sultry and she even needs to take a shower several times a day, but she found that the solar water heaters used in China are too backward, and the water temperature will become cold pretty soon. Because her grandpa is also an electrical professional, Lu learned that China's new energy technology is a lot worse than that of European and American countries. The key technology of solar energy is abroad. If she has been accepting inherent knowledge in China, it will obviously fall far short of the expected effect. With the long-term development, it will become more and more difficult to break through new technologies for China. From this moment, Lu decided to go to a famous foreign university to learn new energy technology. She yearns for Cambridge University in the UK. This dream is too deep for her, even engraved in her bones. When she was just in elementary school, she wrote about this goal everywhere. In order to go to Cambridge, a good level of English is a necessary condition. She memorized words and recited grammar day after night. She motivated herself by writing work hard and get admitted to Cambridge on the title page of the IELTS textbook. She has to work hard for this lofty goal because she knows she is not a genius. So, did Lou get what he wanted to enter Cambridge University? Sometimes fate is like this. Lou's academic road is not smooth. She aimed to apply for Cambridge University with confidence looking forward to the next exciting journey, but in the end she was accepted by the University of Bristol, majoring in electrical engineering. That year, Lou was only 18 years old. 
She walked out of her high school and stepped into the unknown University of Bristol alone. It was already depressing to pass by her goal, and she was alone overseas. The helplessness made her even more flustered. Unexpectedly, when she first arrived at the university, she encountered her first setback in her studies. When she pulled a suitcase weighing about 50 kilograms and came to the Bristol University dormitory with great pains, the doorman shut the door upon her face because she had not made an appointment in advance. To make matters worse, the admissions staff responsible for receiving freshmen also left work in a hurry. Helpless, Lou could only stay at the door all night with her suitcase. However, the grueling journey of the UK trip has only just begun. After officially studying in this university, Lou deeply felt the obvious discomfort in both her studies and living habits. Although she took the IELTS test in China, it was only when she arrived in the UK that she found that the English spoken by the locals was completely different from what she learned in China. In the UK, people have their own accents. Lou can only understand some of the words used in daily communication. She can't understand many English dialects at all. What's more, the teachers in class are all professional terms. Immediately, Lou felt an unprecedented sense of depression. What made her even more timid was the practical operation. When the teacher brought a stack of circuit boards, Lou was stunned. She had learned theoretical knowledge, but she had no operational experience. Lou decided to get rid of her fear. She bought a recording device, recorded all the knowledge taught by the teacher, and went back to listen to it repeatedly. For the experimental operations that require hands-on, Lou is more focused on observation and learning in class, for fear of falling behind a certain step. In Bristol, few people can work as hard as Lu Mingjin at the undergraduate level. Students can see Lu almost every time they go to the library. Soon, her efforts have also been recognized by professional teachers. After graduation, the professor also wrote the highest evaluation for her in her graduation report. When the professor knew about Lu's dream, he wrote a long letter of recommendation to Cambridge University and then helped his proud students win interviews. Lu naturally lived up to expectations, successfully passed the various assessments, and finally entered the coveted Cambridge University at the age of 21. The later story is what you have heard at the beginning of the video. At the age of 23, this girl has won many honors and research results that her mentors did not get in their 50s. Major scientific research institutions around the world have sent her invitations, but she declined all of them and returned to the motherland with her research results. Now, her figure is still busy in the laboratory late at night, but this time is in her own country. There are significant logistical challenges to renewable energy in China. One such issue is grid connections from renewable energy power plants to the electricity grid. But as more geniuses like Lu come along, all problems will be solved. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. Please keep following our channel and like our videos. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.